Okay, welcome back to our study of the Dhammapada. Today we continue on with verse number 64, which reads as follows. Yavaji vampi jebalo panditang payirupasati natso dhammang vijanati dambi suparasangyata which means Yavaji Vampi Jebalo, a, a fool who for his whole life Panditang Payirupasati attends upon or associates with a wise person. Not so Dhammang Vijanati, such a person, such a fool, even though they spend their whole life with the wise person doesn't realize the Dhamma for themselves. Dambi supara sangyata, just as the spoon in the soup. Doesn't taste the soup. Uh, so this is a story, a uh, verse based on a story, another very short story of the Venerable Udayi who was, I guess, a bit of a fool I'm not sure if this is Lalu Udayi or, or just another Udayi but uh, it's one of those people who never really caught on to the actual teaching he may not have been a bad monk but he just kind of stuck around didn't really have a clue as to what the Buddha taught and certainly hadn't realized it for himself. But when the elders left the Dhamma Hall <coughs> and there was nobody around, he liked to go and sit up in the uh, Dhammasana, the, uh, the Dhamma, Dhamma chair. So they have a special chair where someone, when they're giving a Dhamma talk, sits so, so that even a younger monk would be sitting higher than, than the senior monks for the time that they were giving the Dhamma talk. So whoever's teaching the Dhamma, they would have them sit higher as a show of respect. And so he used to go and sit on it and pretend like he was some great elder and he knew what he was doing. So one day he's doing this and a bunch of visiting monks come in and they see him up on the Dhamma chair and they think, oh, this must be some great elder. And so they all go up and they uh, sit around him and ask him all sorts of questions about, it says about the aggregates and uh, very deep subjects, about the five aggregates and the twelve ayatana, the twelve uh, bases, and uh, the eighteen dhatus, the eighteen elements. I ask him all sorts of questions, and he's like, I don't know. He, has, he, 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 he turns out to be a fool and not have any answers. And uh, the other monks are, are appalled because uh, the monastery where he was staying was, was the monastery of the Buddha. So he said, how? they said to themselves, how can it be? Here you are, how long have you been a monk? And I guess he was an elder, so he'd been a monk for at least ten years, or at least he had been there for some time, and they were appalled that he had been, been with the Buddha all that time and hadn't learned anything. And so, uh, criticizing him, they, walked, they went over to pay respect to the Buddha. And they waited until the appropriate time and made an appointment to see the Buddha and went in and paid respect to the Buddha and said, uh, Venerable Sir, there's this monk and he's sitting up in the Dhamma chair and we asked him all these questions and he hadn't a clue. And we're thinking, how could it be that someone who'd been with you so long, uh, living in the same monastery as the Blessed One himself, still wasn't able to realize the Dhamma for him? So they had no clue about the Dhamma. And the Buddha taught them, uh, gave him his teaching, and spoke this verse. He said, even if a fool, even if they lived together with, a wise, with wise people for a hundred years, Because they're a fool, they never they never realize the Dhamma, no matter how long they how much time they spend. And then he said, it's just like this, just like uh, the spoon, when you 
put a spoon in the soup, it never has an opportunity to taste the soup, no matter if you keep it in the soup for a hundred years. So that's the verse, um, that's the story, and that's the verse. The actual teaching behind it uh, is obviously more generally applicable than just the story. It's uh, a caution to us. That, and, and some people might even be surprised that this is possible. How could it be that you could spend so much time even your whole life with wise people and never become wise. And the, the analogy of the spoon in the soup is quite apt. It's because of the nature of, the, of the, the people. If a person is of a nature to be cruel and, and lustful and, and uh, arrogant and deluded and all these bad things, so it performs... Uh, unwholesome acts and, and is unwholesome in their speech and unguarded in their behavior and uh, uh, unwholesome in the mind. If they're inclined towards unwholesomeness, then, then physical presence doesn't help them. You see this acutely with uh, even people who can answer questions and do have knowledge of the Dhamma People who have studied a lot, but have never practiced, can um, can still inside be incredibly um, clueless to the the truth, unenlightened inside. So they have trouble ask. They ha they actually have trouble answering questions in a cogent fashion that they aren't able to put together the Buddha's teaching in, into a way that's understandable because they themselves don't understand it. So when asked deep questions, even people who have studied a lot, it's uh, easy to tell whether they have or not practiced based on their ability to explain the teaching in a cogent manner. Meditation is really the key. I always try to bring these videos back to our meditation practice. And, and it's the meditation that allows you to taste the soup, so to speak. If a person isn't practicing the teachings, it's like uh, reading a map but never driving, or, or reading the driver's manual and never actually getting behind the wheel. Our knowledge of the Buddhist teaching and even our, our rational understanding and agreement of the Buddhist teaching, it's, um, it's similar to any philosophy where you will you find philosophers passionately arguing for a certain philosophy but not following it themselves. You find doc it's like doctors who smoke cigarettes or, or themselves have poor, habit, have poor health habits. Right? It's um, this kind of hypocrisy is, is one way of putting it, but it, ca it can just be a, a superficial understanding or a lack of understanding. I mean, there are many reasons for this. There are monks who become monks for the wrong reason. They ordain because they have nowhere else to go, there are social outcasts and, and so on. In, 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 in Asian countries it's often poor people who, um, who ordain like as novices. Novices will become novices not because they have this keen interest at seven years old to become enlightened, but because at seven years old they don't have enough food to eat and their parents can't feed them, so they go to the monastery and they're promised a, a meal and shelter and getting off on the wrong foot like this they grow up in the wrong way and by the time they become monks they're in their it's entrained in their mind they're they're trained in the wrong way they're set in being a career monk and as a result they don't have the inclination or the they're inured you could say against uh, against the realization Inured, I don't know if that's the right word. I'm looking for a word like insulated against it. They're not able to realize it because of the... Trenched. No, they're inured, I think is the word. I can't remember. But they, uh, they're, they're, they're far from it. They're not able to um, connect with the Dhamma because it's a, their, their way of thinking about it as, is as a livelihood and uh, as an intellectual pursuit or as a culture. There's so much ingrained in them that is is wrong. So the Buddha said it's, um, I think the Buddha said, or also it was one of the commentaries, that it's harder to 
uh, remove right view than it is to remove wrong view. Uh, paraphrasing. But uh, the point is, a person with wrong view, you can teach them meditation quite easily because their wrong view is it's very easy to change. And they, when they realize how wrong they are, they give up and they follow the teaching. But a person who has right view and who knows all the truth intellectually, it's very hard to teach. Because no matter what you say, they say, yes, I know. That. Yes, 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 I know. And they don't realize that actually they don't really know what they're talking about. They know everything, but they know nothing. And then there are monks who are corrupt, who are just using it as a livelihood or even engaging in evil practices. And then there are just people who never get it. It's, um, I mean, for most of us it's very difficult. We were talking last night about the four types of lotus. There are just some people who will never get the Dhamma, never realize it. Maybe their minds are in the wrong place. But uh, we don't, that, that's too discouraging. I think that's not really what we're talking about here. We're talking about people who don't want to learn, people who are foolish, who are engaged in wasting their time and, and who... Uh, who are too lazy to actually put the teachings into practice. Yeah. Again, it's not a criticism, or it's not really, um, it's not, not a, I would want to go around pointing fingers, but it's uh, an admonishment to all of us to take this seriously, that um, we should never be complacent just because we're Buddhists, or obviously just because we're monks. I think that's often the case. There are people who think that just because we're monks, we're perfect. Of course, then there's the opposite case, people who uh, don't ever give monks a break and uh, are always criticizing the smallest faults in monks. I know there's people like that uh, who don't realize how difficult it is to be a monk. But uh, it certainly isn't enough. It's not enough to call ourselves Buddhist. Uh, lay people are the same. It's very easy to become uh, complacent, thinking that I'm Buddhist now and that's enough. It's certainly not enough. A person, the Buddha said, a person can live their whole life with a wise person and never become wise. It has all to do with our own practice. Good companions are only useful if we emulate them, if we follow them, if we learn from them. Otherwise we become a burden on them and they're better off without us. So our practice of cultivating wholesome actions, wholesome speech, wholesome thoughts, and uh, cultivating wisdom. It's all, it's all, the burden is all placed on us. It's at every moment, how we act, how we speak, how we think, whether we have mindfulness, whether we have uh, awareness, whether we're cultivating insight and wisdom for ourselves. That's the determination of whether we taste the soup. Otherwise, we're just like a spoon. You can be surrounded by the teachings, but never realize the teachings for yourself. Still not a bad thing. Um, there's lots of good that can come from being surrounded by the Buddhist teaching and being, being a monk and so on. But to realize the Buddhist teaching, you have to practice for yourself. He said, the Buddha said, even the Buddha is just one who shows the way. It's us who have to walk the path. So, simple teaching, uh, something as a reminder for us. And it's a nice analogy for us to remember the simile of the spoon in the soup. Tomorrow we have the other side of the coin, those who can taste the soup. So tune in, not tomorrow, next time. So tune in next time. Thank you all for keeping up and for the positive feedback. I appreciate it. And I'm glad to know that these videos are a benefit. I wish for everyone out there to be able to put the teachings of the Buddha into practice and find true peace, happiness, and freedom from suffering.